Uh, I didn't start out as a as a journalist. I didn't 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 do any uh, professional training. I started out after after my university uh, course. Uh, well, I did history at the university, which is always a good grounding for learning how to research things and and, and, and working out how to um, put put work, um, the, the, the results of your research together into a into something people could understand. And uh, but after university, I worked in a fast print shop in Morecambe down the West End, uh, designing leaflets, business cards, letterheads for all the hotels down there. And while I was doing that, I also did a, a little What's On listings magazine, uh, and that and also and a occasional comics fanzine, which uh, we sold at the Westminster Comics Marts down in London. We went down on the train, and uh, Richard Starkings and people and John Tomlinson at Marvel UK really liked it and started contributing to, to it. When I got a job offer at Titan, uh, I left the fast print shop when, even though the job offer was with, suddenly withdrawn by uh, another person at Titan, I thought, well, I'm going to go, and went to London anyway, and Richard Starkins phoned me up and said, come into Marvel, you can do some design work um, and, and dress properly because, you know, you, you know you've got to be, you know, be look respectable. So I started working in the magazine department under Shida Prana uh, on, on, with issue 130 of Doctor Who magazine. And they knew I was a Doctor Who fan, obviously, and I started going through back issues and things like that and coming up, throwing ideas around and such like, and got the, the job of Doctor Who magazine editor for, with, from issue 137. I've been watching Doctor Who ever since I was a bit like, like tiny. So I can remember little bits and bobs of later Doc William Hartnell stories and I definitely remember watching Power of the Daleks with that Dalek sort of like coming out from all going under the under the uh, the door and uh, Moonbase is another one I can remember watching um, I vaguely remember seeing the gunfighters being covered on Blue Peter uh, so those are my early memories but we didn't have a TV set in the early 70s at all so I missed the early John Pertwee period but when then came back in the after Three Doctors when the colour you know we got a colour TV set and I remember watching Three Doctors and from then on carrying on and sort of went to university and sort of like faded out again so I don't remember the Peter Davison years hadn't seen many of the Colin Baker stories so it was like in some ways it was coming back to Doctor Who fresh when I was doing the Doctor Who doing the magazine so it's a learning curve there to pick up on all the history of what had gone on uh, you do a page plan in terms of like what you're going to put into the magazine I mean obviously you know the staples the comic strip the Gallifrey Guardian and, and features you know there's going to be at least two or three interviews uh, one of which will be a production interview, ideally, and you want to have an actor or a key actor as a as your lead interview because that's the sort of thing you'd have on the cover. Um, and ideally, you want an interview with the doctor at least, you know, once every three months. But and, and people like Sophie and Sylvester were wonderful in terms of supporting the magazine, so the, we, they were really helpful in that regard. Um, so, you know, Sylvester and Sophie came along to the Marvel offices at one point just to do a long interview with me. And Tom Baker did. We did a three-part interview with him. Uh, that always helps the sales of the magazine. Is there anything I'm particularly proud of? Yeah, well, just working on it. I really enjoyed working on Lot 2 magazine. It was a really, but working at Marvel UK generally was a really exciting and vibrant time. I, uh, I mean, I do, you know, the spitting image covers, for example, were great fun to do. Um, the comic strip was wonderful. I will always defend the comic strip being in the magazine. It's an integral part of it. And I love the original ones in Doctor Who Weekly that Deadskin uh, commissioned. It, it's a, it's not what it's just keeping the magazine going because it, I was told by, in no uncertain terms that there were they were they were considering closing it off so, and, and and we're here now 40 years later and the magazine's still going which is fantastic yeah I'm still watching Doctor Who and and you know because I'm no longer involved in the whole Doctor Who sphere you know I'm not, not having edited the magazine or done other than that I had, had edited the two uh, series that I did a John Pertwee comic series, a third Doctor series, and a, and a seventh Doctor series for Titan Comics, which, you, which have gone down quite well, I think. And I'd love to do more of those. Uh, but I, I saw it, it's quite fun to watch it, ha not knowing what you what, what to expect or what, what, what's going to come next. So, uh, and that, that's that's good. I've uh, just done a comic strip for the the new Core and Buster humor special, which revived a lot of the old comic heroes from the 1970s for Rebellion, who were in 2018 but they bought a load of the old British heroes and they're doing a lot with their, their back catalogue so hopefully, I would, hoping I'm going to do more uh, I'm working on 
promoting the Lakes International Comic Art Festival and in 2020 we will have a science fiction comic strand. So I'm pretty sure there'll be an element of Doctor Who in that. So uh, watch this space. Oh, bad joke.